Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to my video all about being long haul cabin crew. I'm going to tell you the good, the bad and the ugly because there is good times, there is bad times and there is ugly times. So I'm going to tell you everything. I feel like I wish someone told me everything before I started because I had these expectations that were maybe not met. So yeah, I just thought I'd tell you the whole story. So I was long haul cabin crew for Virgin Atlantic. Now, I left quite a while ago now. So how long have I been with Jordan? Let me think. Gents will be five. I've been with Jordan seven years. So I left there around six and a half years ago. So quite a long time ago, but I guess being long haul cabin crew is kind of the same, no matter who you work for, same kind of job, same kind of trips. So yeah, I just thought I'd get going and tell you everything about it. I thought the best way to do it would be to tell you my journey from start to finish. And then I have some questions that people have asked specifically, which I will answer at the end. Anything that I don't cover throughout the video. So let's just get straight into it. So six and a half years ago I left, meaning I started seven and a half years ago. I believe that's right, around seven and a half years ago, this time in 2000 and... Now I've got a rack in my brain. I was 21, so it would have been 2011. This time, yeah, so this time in the year 2011. So basically, I was at university. When I was about 20, I was at university. I hated the course I was on. I wanted something more from life, I didn't want to be, I was basically studying social work, I didn't want to be a social worker, I'd fully worked that out whilst being at university. I wanted something more from life, i had always had the ambition to travel, travel is a huge passion and a huge interest of mine, if you follow my channel you will know that, I love taking the boys on holiday, I'm a mum of two as well if you didn't guess, I love taking the boys on holiday, I love travelling with my husband, that has never left me and will never leave me. I love travel. I figured that long haul cabin crew would have been the perfect job for me because I love to travel, I'm a kind of people's person, I'm confident. So yeah, I thought let's go for it. That day that I decided that's what I wanted to do, I wanted to leave uni and I wanted to go and be cabin crew, Virgin Atlantic were actually recruiting. So I thought let's give this a shot, let's apply. So I applied online and I got past the first stage of interviews and I was invited to London Gatwick they have a headquarters at London Gatwick to do the second round of interviewing and oh my god I wanted that job so badly and I will actually never forget the feeling when they told me that I'd had the job. It, I just felt so proud and so excited for my future, really excited. So I got the job basically and I got the job in the July and the training was to start in the October so you do have to wait quite a while you know for the next training program and all that kind of stuff so I was so excited. I really will never forget that feeling and I'm sure anyone that has wanted something so bad and then gets it it's just an amazing feeling so yeah especially with kind of cabin crew because it's a whole different life you are starting a completely different life. So training, let's talk about training, wow. So I've been to university, but cabin crew training is one of the hardest things you know, academically um, I've ever done. It was rock solid, it was so hard. So I had to go and stay at London Gatwick for six weeks. They pay you for your training, a basic wage. So basically cabin crew get paid a, a pretty basic salary. Um, don't expect to make loads of money basically being cabin crew, I'll put it that way. Um, you won't get paid very much at all compared to other kind of jobs that I've done. You can kind of progress and earn a little bit more but still then you won't earn loads. That's just the way it is being cabin crew, everyone that's cabin crew knows that. You can make up money other ways but I'll explain that later. So during my training that they, they paid me but they did not pay for my accommodation. So basically everything that I'd earned paid for my accommodation in London Gatwick at that point. Some people move up to London Gatwick or London Heathrow, you are based from both airports and they're around an hour apart, but I wanted to stay living at home, so I stayed living at home in Wiltshire, so the commute to London Gatwick is two hours and the commute to London Heathrow is an hour and a half, so it is a long commute. But being long haul cabin crew, obviously you only do the commute once a week twice a week at most. So as I said, training is really, really tough. 
you are on the go from seven in the morning, you know, getting up, getting ready because you have to match grooming standards. You have to look a certain way. And if you don't, you can get disciplinary and all that kind of stuff. So you have to be up getting ready, making sure that you match the grooming standards. And then you will be going till nine o'clock at night because when you get home from training around five, six o'clock, you need to be revising for the test the next day. So yeah, no free time at all. You know, I, I can say I kind of did enjoy it because I was so excited about the future, but it's tough. So yeah, if you're thinking about it, it is really tough. And I do know some people that didn't make it through because it is pretty ruthless. If you don't pass the test, you don't make it through. So I got my first roster, they're called. And my first flight was to New York. And New York is one of my favourite places. It it always has been ever since I've been young. I love New York. So I was happy to be going to New York. And then my second flight was St. Lucia. And my third flight is... Oh, I completely forgotten now. I can't remember. My memory's gone. I can't remember. But yeah. So what you learn is in training is before every flight, you have something called a briefing. It's a safety briefing basically, so you have to meet all of your crew in a room because every time you fly, you will be flying with someone different. You probably won't know them, there are a lot of people that work in these airlines, literally so many. You are lucky if you know someone that you're on a flight with, obviously probably the longer you've been there, the more you might know more people. But I was there a year and it was rare for me to know anyone on my flight. So that was the first kind of red flag number one for me. I didn't realise before I started but I'm actually not as confident as I thought and to be managed by someone else every kind of flight and um, they all had different kind of management tactics, different kind of managing styles, I did find that tough. So in the safety briefing meetings, you would be asked a question, basically. You'd be put on the spot, I would say. So they'd go around the room and they'd ask you a question and you had to get it right. If you didn't get it right, you were then given a second chance on a different question. And they could be medical questions or safety questions. And trust me, there are thousands of questions, thousands of different bits of information you need to remember. And for me, that was just crazy like I would say I'm, I'm of pretty average intelligence I got kind of A's B's and C's in my GCSE results but for me I found it really hard to learn all these bits of information it was really tough and it used to give me such anxiety the fact that I may get one of these questions wrong one be made to look stupid in front of people that I've never met but I've got to then work and go on a trip with and two, just to feel stupid basically and to be embarrassed and be stood down at the end of the day. If you got the questions wrong that you were asked, you were not allowed to fly and you had to go back to training. So for me, that anxiety was tough. I mean, I suffer with anxiety anyway, but to be know that before every flight you were going to be tested like that, it did give me so much anxiety. I prefer to be tested in different ways. I don't like being put on the spot under pressure. If you could write it down, I'd have probably been so much better and so much more karma, or if it was private one-to-one, -one, but the fact it was in front of people that you don't know and that you feel like are judging you, that was something I hated. And yeah, I really didn't like that. And it was also on the way back as well, so you weren't even over it, like on the way. You know that on the flight home, you would be asked another question and yeah, it, I just found it a lot, basically, a lot. So you can imagine how I felt then on my very first flight, I got asked a question that the answer I had no idea to. No idea at all. So the manager that I'd never met before, never met any of my crew before, apart from I was with one girl that I did my training with, she asked me a question and it was something about something in first class. Obviously, I've never been in first class. I was working in economy because I was new. And although we, we would have kind of gone over it in training, I it was a different kind of learning. It was about um, plane equipment. And in training, you write it all down on the plane. So that's the way I'd learnt it. But then she asked me to say it and tell me exactly where this piece of equipment was. And... I just felt under so much pressure and I felt so anxious. I had no idea. So I was mortified, basically. Absolutely mortified. I could have broke down in tears right there and then, honestly. I was so mortified. Um, luckily, she asked me a second question and I got it right. But from then on, I dreaded the pre-flight briefings. Literally dreaded. My anxiety would be sky high. 
it was just awful and I don't know how anyone else does it. I don't know how anyone else does it without feeling anxious. I guess everyone's different, but for me, that was another red flag when I realised that was going to be before every flight. I was going to be feeling like that. It took me back to primary school when you do quick maths and you'd have to say your score in front of the whole class and like that. And it, I just hated it. I hated it. I always have. It's just the way I am. So yeah, that is a, was a big red flag for me. So I got on the plane. Now, when you're actually working on the plane, let me tell you this. It's the hardest job I have ever done. You don't sit down from takeoff to landing, rarely. You might get a break if you're lucky, but wow, it is tough. Let me tell you, you walk up and down those aisles. I believe they did a study that on a flight from London to New York, a cabin crew would walk nine miles because you're just up and down those aisles. You don't sit down. Yeah, it, you're just serving drinks, you're serving food. You're kind of like a waitress in the sky that doesn't stop. I mean, I'm sure if you're a waitress, you know what that feels like. You don't stop at all. And then on top of that being a waitress, you have all these safety things going on in your head that you need to be thinking about. So the actual job on the plane, I did not enjoy at all. I kind of hated it, in fact. I I don't like being a waitress. I just don't like that kind of thing. I'm more creative. That's what I love. I love doing YouTube and things like that. I did not like being a waitress and I did not like having all that pressure on me about all the kind of safety stuff because... You're responsible for a lot, trust me, being a cabin crew member, you're responsible for the safety of the plane. And it's a lot of pressure and it was tough. So my first flight was to New York. So basically there's a few different kind of trips to New York they do, but mine was the there and back. So I only got to stay in New York for less than 24 hours. I'd say it was a just over 12, 15, 15 hours stop in New York. So yes, I did get to see a little bit of New York, but not very much at all. Now you get different trips. You could get that, it was called the bullet. So you could either get the bullet flight to New York there and back, basically you got 15 hour layover. I just had to go sort something out of my son and I've completely lost track of where I was. I believe I was telling you about trips. So you could get a bullet trip to New York or you could get a four to five night in Cuba, or you could get four to five night in the Caribbean. It was all different and totally dependent on your roster. So as you were new, as I was new, I had no seniority, so I couldn't really bid for trips. It wasn't until you'd been there for quite a while that you could have some kind of say over your trips. I say some, you, you, still, got, you still got what you were given and you could potentially swap trips, but rarely, I would say, I mean, it was just luck if you could swap that someone else wanted to swap with your trip. So you basically had to get what you were given. As you've been there longer, obviously you would have more say and all that kind of stuff. As I was only there a year, I had no say in anything that I did. I think I could swap trips after six months. So I just had to put up with what I was given basically. So my next trip to St. Lucia was completely different to my New York flight. So my manager was absolutely lovely. He was a really, really nice guy. And that immediately put me at ease. I had a really, really lovely crew. We It was a three night, so it was a gorgeous trip. It was a three night trip to St. Lucia. St. Lucia is beautiful and still remains one of my favorite places I've ever visited. To this day, it is stunning. So that was an amazing trip. So there was such a contrast between um, your trips and the fact that you had no idea what kind of trip it would be is something that I hated. I personally didn't like that. I didn't like turning up to work and not knowing who I was gonna be working with, what the manager was gonna be like, what I'd be doing on the trip, that I just didn't like the unknown basically. So another red flag ding that, wow, this is kind of tough. Saying that, you had amazing times as well. Like I had the most amazing time in St. Lucia with a lovely crew. A trip I will really never forget. I mean, we hired a boat around the island of St. Lucia and it was just amazing. And I had a, quite a few trips like that. So I went to Cape Town, which is another amazing place. And that was, how long were we in Cape Town for? I want to say around 24 hours. So still not very long, maybe a little bit longer. And I went up to Table Mountain, we went out for steak, all that kind of stuff. So I had some really, really amazing times, which which you can't take away from being long haul cabin crew. You will have amazing experiences as long as you're aware that not every trip is going to be amazing and you will meet people that you don't necessarily get on with. I remember one time I went to Barbados and the manager there 
was throwing a room party so if you're a cabin crew you'll know what i mean by a room party it's completely not my thing so some of the cabin crew like to throw room parties so it never really took my fancy that was not my kind of thing if i was in like barbados i would not want to be sat in someone's room getting drunk i'd want to be going out and seeing the island um, and luckily some people were with me but some people wanted to do a room party so this the manager wanted to throw a room party and he got really funny with me that I didn't turn up. The next day, like I saw him by the pool and he was like, why didn't you come to my room party? And I was just like, because I didn't want to, like that's not my thing. And he got really offended and it's like, what? Like, so you did get that thing, but you'll get that in any job. I'm sure you'll get people you don't really get on with. So you just kind of, it's just kind of the unknown with being long haul cabin crew that you're on a trip with these people and you have no idea who's going to be there. You have no idea if you're going to get on with anyone. You have no idea if you're not going to get on with anyone. So that's something I found really hard. So I loved seeing some parts of the world that I would probably have never seen if I wasn't long haul cabin crew. I would have preferred it to be with a friend or family member, which is something that is kind of hard to do with long haul cabin crew. You do get to sometimes take people on trips, but it's really hard because it's not confirmed. You're, you're only allowed to take them on standby tickets. So if the flight fills up, then um, they basically get stuck in the location of where they are and they have to fend for themselves. So it's not as easy as just taking someone on a trip. You have to make sure that the flights are kind of empty and obviously it's not always gonna be the way. Flights are usually full. Most of the flights I worked were pretty full. So I did that for a year and I saw places of the world that I would have never seen, as I said, and I don't regret it at all. There were points, I used to kind of go like that, so there were points where I absolutely loved my job I loved it and I loved what I did and there were points where I hated it and it was just too much for me like not knowing who I was going to be working with, the briefings, the pressure, the anxiety, I just wasn't for me, I figured out. I also just wanted to mention how you can kind of make your wages up so on every trip you go on you'll get an allowance so if you go on a two day LA you will get allowances for that basically so that kind of makes up your wage to something kind of more substantial still not loads you still won't make loads of money being a cabin crew member some people even took out second jobs because they weren't making enough money I feel like i'm being really negative about it and i don't want to be i want to give like an unbiased opinion but i would say that it's really tough and you don't realize how tough it's going to be until you start it some people love it and some people hate it i'm kind of more in the latter category so the reason i left is and if you do follow my channel then you will know that i have kidney issues and this was actually highlighted when i was cabin crew i used to get recurrent kidney infections all kinds of issues so I was signed off with a kidney infection and I kept getting recurrent kidney infections and now I know why six and a half years on because one of my kidneys is slightly larger than the other meaning I'm susceptible to kidney infections, um, obstructions, all that kind of thing which is what I used to suffer with back then. I've only just got it fixed six and a half years later so that kind of really highlighted the problem. I used to find it hard to drink enough and especially as you were flying you would get dehydrated and that was completely my own fault. I was just felt so busy on the flight I didn't feel like I had enough time to drink and of course I did but I was just so manic and I was panicking you know I wanted to get everything done. I never relaxed and just drank and of course when I used to go you know to like Vegas and all those kind of places you would drink alcohol a lot so um, dehydration from the plane, lack of sleep, jet lag and drinking alcohol is not a good mix if you don't have great kidneys. It's an experience I completely do not regret. I had amazing times and I had not so amazing times. If it is a career you want to do, I would 100% recommend trying it out because some people absolutely love it, as I said, and some people don't. If you don't try it, you'll never know. So I've been sent a load of questions on Instagram, so I want to answer those for you guys. So I'm just going to run through them. Would you ever go back to being a cabin crew member? Hell to the no is the answer to that. Hell to the no. What's it like on your body? Does the altitude and funny hours take its toll? Um, yes, absolutely, especially for me as I don't have great kidneys. It 100% took its toll on me. Um, the jet lag was really tough, really tough. Um, so you'd be in like Las Vegas, but you'd be on UK time still because you were just traveling all the time and 
by the time you'd acclimatised, you'd be going back home. So yeah, I did find that actually really tough and kind of hard to enjoy the places that you are because you're so kind of all over the place. Do you miss doing cabin crew? I think you can guess the answer to that. No, I do not miss doing cabin crew, being a cabin crew. As it's long haul, do you stay overnight before working on a return flight? Yes, every flight with Virgin Atlantic, you would stay. Um, the New York, one of the New York flights, the one that I did for my first flight was the shortest time period anywhere that you'd be. What have you learnt about people through being cabin crew? I've learnt that the general public like to moan a lot about a load of rubbish. So people would moan all the time about the food mainly. They would blame the cabin crew who have absolutely nothing to do with the catering of the flight that just goes completely beyond them and they would just moan about anything about not having enough of something about being out of stock or something honestly you just think like oh i'm just not that person i really am not that person so when someone would moan i just have zero tolerance and just be like there are bigger things in the world than me having no chicken meals left just the way it is have you had any scary experiences through flying? No, no scary experiences. I was pretty lucky, no no issues at all. What's the favorite place that you traveled? Um, St. Lucia or Cape Town, they were my two favorite places. Do you think, this is a really interesting one actually, do you think you could have still been cabin crew with kids? Personally, no, but there were people there that did um, do the job with kids, even some people that did it full time. You could only go part time if you had a baby, if you were already um, employed as full time. They, they, uh, as far as I know, they still don't employ part time cabin crew, it's all full time. So it was only the part time staff. If you'd had a baby that you were allowed to go part time, maybe that would have been easier. I think it's around two to three flights a month. Just for the simple fact that number one, I wouldn't have had the childcare. That's just a simple fact. I hadn't, I have no one that could have come and stayed over, you know, for days on end while I was in Las Vegas or something like that. So it completely wouldn't have suited my lifestyle as a mother. But I know that some people do make it work. How? I don't know. They must have someone that they can rely on like 100% that can watch the baby or child when they're away but for me I didn't have that so no I could not have done it when I had kids. What's the hardest part of being cabin crew? The hardest part for me was one the safety briefings and the anxiety I used to face around that but the second hardest part was missing out on key events. I'll never forget when all of my sisters went out for an Indian together and they sent me a picture of themselves and I, I wasn't there and I, that really like hurt me um, I miss them so much and I hated the fact I was away so much and I couldn't see them as much as I wanted to. So for me it was just being away from my family. You're probably away more than you're here, so yeah, I hated that. What were the hours like? So it depends on how long the flight was. So if you did the New York flight that I'm talking about, you'd have two days off after that. I remember sometimes when I did the St. Lucia flight, I had to be at Gatwick Airport at oh I can't remember something ridiculous like 7 or 8 a.m and you can only get parking for one of the airports you can't get parking for both so I had to park at London Heathrow then you have to get a bus the Virgin provide a bus between the airports and I remember getting up at like 2 a.m because you ha I had to get up I had to get ready because the grooming standards you had to match the grooming standards then I had to drive to Heathrow then you have to wait for the bus catch the bus so it's tough trust me like i you're up for over 24 hours um, on a regular occasion. Is cabin crew as glamorous as it looks? Nice hotels and hot weather. Is that the reality? No. <laughs> cabin crew is no way near as glamorous as it looks, in my opinion. Some people might have a different opinion, but this is my opinion and my truth. It's not glamorous at all. Getting up at 2am and getting full glam makeup on is not actually glamorous at all. Like, glamorous to me is um you know a private jet that kind of thing but no to me it was not glamorous at all of course there is some gorgeous destinations that you will visit but you have to do a lot of work to get there and you don't really stay there for that long and you're jet lagged and for me i used to miss home a lot so in my opinion it's not as glamorous as it looks did you enjoy the job your highs and your lows i feel like this is a good question because i don't want to talk about my highs as well sometimes i enjoyed the job and sometimes i didn't i enjoyed the job when i had a lovely crew which did happen now and then and you just kind of all gel together and you really get on and you plan things to do down route so i remember i had an amazing san francisco with a guy i met 
um, not boyfriend kind of thing. It wasn't like that, it was just a friend and we had an amazing time in San Francisco. That's something I'll never forget. We also had an amazing time in Boston. Of course, there were amazing times that I had, but there were also low times that I had, um, such as when I went to Cuba, Havana, and it just wasn't the kind of place that I loved. Of course, it was lovely to see. There, there was a few people on the crew that I got on with, but I just felt so far away from home. So yeah, there were definitely some low points as well. When you first met Jordan, were you working as cabin crew and was it hard being away? Yes, I was um, cabin crew when I first met Jordan and yes, I did find it hard being away from him. That's super soppy, isn't it? Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't something I enjoyed being away all the time, that's for sure. Did you make a lot of friends and have fun doing the job? I did definitely make some friends. Um, we're still friends on Facebook, but no like friends that I would see regularly only because cabin crew live all over the country So it was rare that you'd meet someone that lived near you basically were they strict on your appearance? Yes, they had a grooming policy you had to follow so yes, they were Strict on that and you had to follow it So um, you had to wear like red lipstick you had to wear makeup you had to have your hair a certain way You had to wear your uniform a certain way. So yes, they were definitely strict on that What's the best way to become a cabin crew member? So basically all Virgin wanted was customer service so as long as you could provide experience of customer service and they would employ anyone, obviously they don't just employ anyone but I mean that was the main requirement for applying to Virgin. Does anyone get a free upgrade? No, I never witnessed anyone getting a free upgrade. <laughs> Do you have to share hotel rooms with other crew? No, you get your own hotel room. What's the one thing you miss about it? The one thing I miss about it is the adventure and the travel, obviously. Um, I love adventure and I love travel, so that is one thing that I do miss about it. What did a typical day look like for you? This is a good one. So let's talk about a typical day. So when I went to St. Lucia, I got up at 2 a.m., had to get ready, had to meet grooming standards. So say I left my house so I got up at 2am, it would take me two hours to get ready, I was a bit of a perfectionist so I did want to look perfect. Um, I'd have to leave at half three to get to London Heathrow for five, you then have to get the bus say at half five from London Heathrow to Gatwick which, which would get you at Gatwick for 6.30 and then you'd be ready for briefing at seven o'clock. You would then um, have a briefing, the dreaded safety briefing. You would then go to the plane and set up, do all that kind of thing. You would then be on the flight for, I think it's 11 or 12 hours. And you would then have to get off the flight and um, transfer to your hotel, which can take some time, sometimes up to an hour, sometimes over an hour. We would then usually all get changed and go for dinner. I remember that night in St Lucia my alarm went off again so I'd been up for 24 hours and I was only just eating dinner so um, yeah that was a day in the life, that was 24 hours in the life. Did you actually get to see the places that you visited? This would really depend on the kind of flight schedule you're on so as I said the New York I was only there for the evening but the St Lucia I was there for three nights so I did get to see a little bit of St Lucia you won't be there any longer than three to four nights I'd say a three to four night you'd probably get around once a month it really just depends on the flight schedules so that is the end of my questions and I will leave this video here I hope you guys enjoyed it any more burning questions leave them in the comment section and I will do my best to answer if you are new to my channel I'd love you to stick around and subscribe my name is Lucy and I'm a mom of two boys and I post videos all about fashion motherhood beauty lifestyle and travel and I'll see you guys soon.